Hi guys, so welcome to this system. It's um, Plasma, of course, and um, we have here the version of ISO. We're working on the version of 2109.11. And it's already today released on AAG. If you don't know what it is, then have a look at arconix.info. Uh, arconix sorry. The topic of the video is um, a new desktop, Cutefish. People have uh, found it already, I've been communicating on it on the social medias, and they're downloading it and installing it and getting stuck, sort of, right? There's not much, um, well, it's it's a, like I compare it with a toddler, right? It's, it's a desktop, it's there, we want to share the experience to install Cutefish, but it's it feels like it's a project that's ongoing, right? Under development, and um, it feels good. It's it's it looks nice, but um, don't expect too much from it. It's not going to be your daily driver because of the many things that are still missing are still probably in the pipeline, and people need time to develop it. As you know, I make videos with titles on YouTube, but YouTube lets me type hundred characters. That's it. Always include more in every video. And this one, for example, I'll show you what I do to install Ukui, uh, sorry, not Ukui, but Cutefish, and it will get a nice article here. So build your own ISO and then Cutefish, right? So the Arconix B Cutefish is gonna be added here. So the build your own ISO, why is it the B? The B stands for you wanted the power to build your own ISO with more applications, with less applications, with the right applications, with drivers, etc., with Steam, with a game on it, etc., etc., right? You can also add personal stuff on there, like your personal configuration for Alacrity, UrixVT, Termite, Terminator, or any of the applications, right? As long as they are in the .config or the .local, local that's where normally all the configurations are but also the bash rc you can just use your own and override ours so that's what this person is all about and if you want to have more things like uh, i want to combine gnome with i3 or plasma with dwm it's all explained the knowledge is out there you can reuse our code reuse our scripts and make your own build your own iso but that's maybe still a little bit too far, right? It is all about learning. Arconix University, the learning path. Uh, sometimes people ask where to start. Well, start by reading this article, right? Learning path. Now, the video, right? The video. So build your own ISO, a new article on there. Installing Cutefish is, guys, as simple as this. Pseudo pacman minus s cutefish and we have to thank arch linux for that right it's super simple thank you arch linux to make it that easy that's it we got a complete desktop if you type pseudo pacman minus s cutefish boom enter it's there on my plasma as well and we have the arch linux treasure to remove it again so that's also great we're talking about installing it in a virtual box now because we can record it then right so more knowledge, how do you set up your virtual box? Now, lots of videos have been uh, created for that, but showing you what I do is interesting, right? I make a template. The template is ready and it's already copy pasted over and the template is here. It's waiting for me. So I make a template. I put it in a GZ, I extract it, it's waiting every single clean install, I just do add, template, template feedbox. So I don't need to go all, over all the details again on my machine. It knows what memory I wanna have, etc. So let's go over quickly to have a look at the settings. And these change from video to video. We all change from time to time. The size of the memory, if you wanna have EFI or bias, right? UEFI or BIOS uh, processor is four, so 50-50, okay. This is enabled for INC, so we see something. 
acceleration display. Most importantly, this one needs to be set right. Many people do this because that's the standard, right? VirtualBox tells you to take this and we say no. Either this one is good and then it says invalid settings, it's correct. And or you say this one, VBox SVGA, still says invalid settings, it's correct. Okay. Storage, audio, network, zero port, nothing there that I have changed. I did do change always this, so I can communicate with my own system. So I've created a folder called VBox Shared in home, Eric VBox Shared. I have full access and it's auto mounted. And with Thunar, only with Thunar, I can communicate with my host system. So this plasma thing is the host system and the guest is gonna be Qtfish, okay? That's how it works. Okay, lots of Arch Wiki articles and videos on article links. So I get my, got myself a template. Why would I need a template to quickly do this? Clone. The article links B of Qtfish. And then you keep on testing other Linux distributions, just the same, clone and start. Then you feed it, huh? feed the beast, they say, right? Choose a disk uh, file, an ISO file, and then you go to, in my case, InSync, shared core team, there. That's it. You've downloaded an ISO, you've put it in there, and then you start up. Probably gonna start, no, on the second screen I wanted to say, but it's not. So, Control F, so, that's the right control and then F for full screen immediately at the beginning. So it recognizes I have 1920 on 1080 pixels. That's what it wants to know, right? How many real estate do you have for your screen? Well, I, I booted up with um, first line. Um, so if you have troubles, you select another line and another line and another line, like the four lines there. And if you have NVIDIA, you have to be very careful what to pick because sometimes software doesn't really like the Nouveau driver. So you need to be aware that there are drivers and some of these drivers work against each other. Okay, so this is just VirtualBox. First line will do just fine. For the rest, I'm gonna repeat what I tell you in all of the other um, videos or for. Uh, tutorials right because it's all about again where do you live do you want to install stuff during Calamars then it matters if you're offline then it doesn't matter to update the Arch Linux mirrors if you're living in Australia then you need to have the servers from Australia if you run this thing he'll look around and say oh I'm living in Belgium so I'm gonna get the servers from France and Germany maybe etc etc and this is when you clean everything up if you're an application that you say I a hard disk or an SSD or an NVMe and you say oh my god re I really messed things up uh, let's clean everything that's the clean slate blackboard cleaning everything gone and then uh, Calamars will surely figure it out that this hard disk of yours is empty and there will be less issues for Calamars then we've added something that's really is important, right? Don't um, think I'm an advanced user in Linux while you're not. Because advanced installation gives you so many choices and so many things can go wrong because you're selecting the wrong packages. So personally, me, right? I'm using the beginner installation. Why? Because afterwards, after a clean installation, I'll just run scripts and say sudo pacman minus s vivaldi. I want to have sudo pacman minus s uh, Spotify and InSync and Dropbox, etc. Right? It's still great, but it's it, it leaves out the complexity that the other one has. If you're not ready yet to select or deselect, it's not like I'll install everything. Not gonna work. So the beginner selection for me, right? That's the version that we're using, that's for future reference. And then we go for next. This is a simple screens that you see in all the Linux distributions. What language, where do you live, what keyboard do you want? You select whatever you want, right, what you need. And this is the only complex thing that there is, right? Decide, do want to swap. 
how many memory do I have? Oh, I have plenty of memory. You don't need swap, right? It's all about if you wanna hibernate or not with hibernate or swap to file, which means you can make this bigger anytime you want. Every, anytime you need, you make it with a script of ours bigger. And then the other decision is the X4 PTRFS and that's all complexity that still remains and that's it. Now, if you don't know what to do, I probably think many of the Linux distributions do not give you a choice. I'm against giving, like, restricting people and not giving them the freedom to choose, but it, with choices comes knowledge and comes yeah, decision-making, right? So if you don't know what to do, this looks like a good thing. That's also a good thing. Uh, if memory is very low, don't use, uh, use swap in that case, right? But otherwise, all three are basically good. But in my machines, I have a machine of 32 gigabyte, right? I will say no swap and I'll leave the hard disk fully uh, available for it. VirtualBox, use no swap. I've given eight gigabyte of RAM. It's enough, right? No swap for me. Then we go for next. <coughs> Just the name, a password. You want to log in automatically. I want to show. Often when I test out other Linux distributions, I don't want to log in automatically. On my work system, I always want to log in automatically, right? So it's a choice there. And use the same password for the administrator account. So another password for root or not. It's already difficult enough. Take the same password. Gonna have a look at the login. And now we go for next, install a nice little pop-up. Do Are you sure? Because I'm gonna remove everything. Okay, okay, go, remove. Voila. So while that's doing its work, we can have a look around. One of the questions was already that was already on Discord is the fact, how do I get out of this thing, right? Cute fish, how do I get out of here? Well, it's here, the sound button. Yeah, I know, the sound button. That's where they put it. So this thing is, is worth a visit for sure, but it's still new, right? I don't have Wi-Fi. I don't have Wi-Fi. I'm on a desktop, right? It's new. And there are some things that, that still need work and, and probably it just needs code, right? Applications, they need to write stuff. And that's where time comes in we'll have to wait. But in the meantime, we can have a look. I say, okay, so this is what they are working on, right? People with a dual screen, right? I am a dual screen user. One thing is beautiful design, just as you see now. The other screen is black. <laughs> I can't move things there, applications there, but the wallpaper is a no-go, right? So be it live with it or don't use it dim the wallpaper and dark themes it works right it works is it a good idea yeah probably system effects there are some system effects so probably there you go that was transparency that we just killed okay now we still see something <laughs> oh look at that all right we're back <laughs> so Look at it and give it a smile, right? Don't get frustrated, but say, okay, all right, fine. Uh, work in progress, right? And then move on, basically. So it's all, it's all nice. I did make it now a little bit darker, so dim the wallpaper, voila. That's the official wallpaper color. It's nice. This one is particularly nice. The menu is also beautiful, the launcher, but we've recognized this more or less from deeping. So kind of look that gives you everything in one go. Gnome is also like that. Dock to the left or to the right, the bottom, small, medium, large, huge, out of height, it's gone, always show, user. Okay, the mouse, let's have a look. All right, still busy. And then we can change cursors. 
So some of, some of the things are there already, are programmed already, and some of the things will not, and don't have to ask us, hey, how can I do this and that? It's If it's not there, it's not there. And wait for the developers. And this is Qtfish version 5, 13, 13. Good numbering, right? 13, 13. Double. Here you see eight gigabyte. And that's it. This is it. These are the settings. If you can't do it with this, it can't be done. It's simple. Voila. And then restart. So the same can be done with um, Arclinx Tweak Tool. So how do you install a desktop in Arclinx? Like this, right? We do an Arclinx B, we download an Arclinx B, and then we say, let's do a uh, installation. Fine. Then there is also the way to launch Arclinx Tweak Tool and install a desktop. This is our welcome screen. I decided not to auto login, right? And um, that's that. So Arclinx Tweak Tool, let's go over it. So Arclinx Control Alt E would be normally our keyboard shortcut, but this is Virgin-like system. We've done almost nothing. We've only said, I want to have a terminal in this dock here. I want to have Sublime Text on this system and have it in the dock. And I want to have Firefox and I have a file manager. Four things I need to develop any desktop. File manager, terminal, an editor and a browser, right? That's it. And all the rest is just left the way it was, right? There will be applications in here that are rubbish that don't normally a user shouldn't see. We just kept everything as is, right? So we'll just wait for the developers to fix and develop things. So again, if you were scanning the video, this is the place to shut down really. This is the place. And you get nice icons, right? Beautiful icons. We recognize, of course, these icons. And that's great. That's great. So, um, yeah, I was saying. So, the Tweak tool, if installed, of course, can also be launched with ATT. And it is installed. So, that's an option to actually launch it. And we'll like, take a look for this here. Oh, probably not up to date. Let's have, uh, have a look. Whoa, okay, right. The new Arclinx Tweak Tool will come in. Um, yeah, we can do it in the background. Do whatever you want. Okay, so the Arclinx Tweak Tool will launch it. Um, another thing is the Arclinx D scripts. I've shown you the pseudo pacman minus S Qtfish. It's simple as that, right? Behind the Arclinx Tweak Tool, the, the button to install Qtfish is just saying sudo pacman minus s so github.com we have scripts if you start with arclinx d and you do not install anything you can select it as well during calamars install it but arclinx d actually grew from the idea that you want to have a basic um, github a basic arch thing a black screen basically, like in Arch. And then you type yourself, sudo pacman minus s, lightm, sdm, enable it, install Qtfish. So that's the the idea of um, of it. So the scripts you can find them on github.com, arclinxd. Don't know why it's at this point in time not responding properly. Um, yeah, let's call repositories then. Don't see it. Now there was a search here as well. Find repository, cute fish. So you can install it with scripts on Arclinx D, you can install it with Arclinx B, you can install it with the ATT, and of course you can just type sudo pacman minus R cute fish, and then you can have a look, and you can trash it again with our uh, desktop trasher. So that's how it goes. Let's see if the Arclinx tweak tool is now in order. There you are. So awesome. And here's the cute fish. Well, I can install, but nothing will happen, right? It's, it's already there. So he'll say it's installed. What do you want, right? But even so, what may 
amaze people. So I always tell more in videos, right? What I'm gonna do now would probably amaze people, but it's it's Arch Linux, it's Arch Linux, it's it's Lego blocks and pieces. What if I put XFCE on there and I install XFCE? Well, you will have XFCE, right? For the people who want to type it in the terminal, it's XFC4 and XFC4 goodies. Boom, it's installed. Is it? Let's try out our logout here. That's the button, right? Logout. So now I have more than cute fish. Reinstalling sometimes is not necessary if you know what you're doing, but code will mess up things but even so so you start again and you try to learn and you see no this is not what Eric gave no it's not the Arachnix B XFC but it is XFCE so with a lot of work you'll have the same look again as we do but if you say hey I'm just here for the fun I'm not for the work right <laughs> and then you install the Arachnix B XFCE or the Arcanix XL or the XS, right? Without the application, but with a proper um, XFCE with all the colors and the wallpapers and icons and scenes with it. So everything works. I want to go to the treasure now, ADT, Arcanix Desktop Treasure. I want to get rid of cute fish. Ah, trash the desktop. This happens so you know what's going on on your machine. That's why I op always open it in a terminal so it can follow along. And of course, if you log out, where the logout? There's here, logout. Uh, nice buttons, right? Logout. And then, of course, cute fish is no more. Now, there was no need to log out at all to know that cute fish was there because XD give me. The X sessions desktop files. XFCE. That's the only thing I can log into. And there you go. So that's a little bit an uh, an all-round video of all the Arcanix projects, really, but also the applications we have and how it all fits together and how we play with all these Lego blocks, these pieces that come from Arcanix and from Arcanix. And it all fits together and it, it's, it's playtime basically. Enjoy.